introduce you to some common skin disorders or disorders of the integumentary system. I chose this list of disorders because they're quite common and I think every adult should be able to recognize them and care for them properly. The first one we'll talk about is acne. Acne is an outbreak of blocked and infected sebaceous glands. They're pimples really. It's caused by an overproduction of oil from these oil or sebaceous glands. The oil can dry up near the pore and plug it up. That causes the gland to become inflamed and infected. On the left is a normal hair follicle with a sebaceous gland, which is producing oil that can leave through the pore around the hair. On the right is a plugged sebaceous gland. It's become inflamed, the, the tissue around it has become inflamed, and here's the plug. Now that plug of oil can actually sometimes appear as a white head or a black head, and all that is is basically the dried up oil that has become oxidized is not allowing any oil to escape so some bacteria is now trapped inside there now it's not inappropriate to lance or pop a pimple as long as it's done with clean skin and hands it's always important to keep the popped pimple clean to avoid any further infection and it's never appropriate to continue picking at a pimple after it's been popped you have to let it heal on its own or you could get scarring. Next are abscesses or boils. They're somewhat related but they're not infected oil glands. It's a bacterial infection of a hair follicle, that is the supporting cells around a hair, sometimes considered an ingrown hair. It can progress into a, what's called a carbuncle and that's when an abscess progresses down into the hypodermis. Now, abscesses or boils should also be lanced or popped and kept very clean so that they can heal properly. These can be painful because of all the pressure that's built up inside the skin. Next is a cyst. Sometimes not as painful, but they're fluid-filled connective tissue membranes. They're not necessarily infected, but they could be the remnants of the body's fight against the bacterial infection deep in the skin. Cysts ought to be removed because they can be unsightly and they can also grow in size over a period of time. Now this term dermatitis is a general term for any rash and it's basically an inflammation of the skin. The inflammatory process has started in the skin and it's usually due to irritation. Perhaps an irritating chemical or something that the individual is allergic to eczema. Now this is also a general term encompassing a variety of inflamed skin conditions caused by an abnormal immune response. The body's own immune system is attacking healthy tissue. Now doctors aren't quite sure what actually causes it but they do know that the person's immune system is causing an inflammatory response in an area of the skin. It's usually on the elbows or on the backs of the knees and is usually localized and it comes and goes. In other words, it's an acute response, sometimes brought on by uh, emotional stress. The inflamed area actually overproduces skin cells, which produces the scales, and the inflamed skin underneath. Infants can get eczema and they typically get it on their cheeks and face, and they tend to grow out of this over time. When adults get eczema, it appears on the elbows, on the backs of the knees, or really anywhere on the body, but it is a, a small localized patch of dry skin. Now moles. Most people have anywhere from 20 or more moles on their skin. What these are are benign tumors caused by faulty cell division genes. And you see in the picture there uh, the different forms that moles can take on the skin. They're often pigmented, which means that they are associated with melanocytes, but sometimes they're not. Moles are pretty harmless. If you wanted one removed, that you should see a dermatologist to have it removed properly, but there should be no reason to, to remove it. They are susceptible to ultraviolet damage from the sun, which could cause them be, to become cancerous. So it's very important for a person who has lots of moles on their skin to make sure that they protect themselves against the damaging ultraviolet rays from the sun. Now psoriasis. This, like eczema, is a disorder of the immune system, but it's more chronic, meaning that it doesn't necessarily go away. 
it does get worse at times and then this and then the inflammation can go down again this is the immune system attacking healthy tissue it's quite common on the scalp and on the hands as well there are some treatments for this it involves a topical application of some hormone creams and then exposure to ultraviolet light again like eczema there is no known cause for this other than the fact that the immune system is attacking healthy tissue anytime the immune system attacks healthy tissue it's considered an autoimmune disease and that's not only associated with the skin but other parts of the body as well the scaly patches arise because the basal cells of the epidermis overproduce and scaly dried epithelium results an ulcer is a sore in the skin or the mucous membrane accompanied by the disintegration of tissue. Ulcers can result in complete loss of the epidermis, dermis, and often the hypodermis. Ulcers won't necessarily repair themselves and quite often require a skin graft in order to be repaired. What you're seeing in the picture here is the result of an ulcer, typically from a person who's been bedridden for a long period of time. These would be considered bed sores. The last thing we'll look at are warts. They're caused by a viral infection by one of the many types of viruses called the human papillomavirus or HPV. There are as many as 10 varieties of warts, the most common considered to be mostly harmless.